Psalm. Three verses of it. I want to deal with this morning a call to worship. A call to worship. Oh, come let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Make a joyful noise unto him with psalm. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. Father, we have learned that to be true. You have been so good to us. You have been so expansive in your care and your love for each one of us today. There's not been any place in our lives ever that you have not been there. We just thank you this morning that we have a Heavenly Father that cares about where we are, cares about what's going on in our lives. And I just ask the Lord, as we break the bread of life this morning, uh, this call to worship, would you just speak into our individual hearts because it's an individual thing. Uh, this, Lord, is something that uh, is relative to every man, woman, boy, and girl in this place this morning. We were created to worship you. Bless now through the anointing of the Holy Spirit, speak into our hearts, and we ask it. In Jesus' precious name, amen. I want to look at worship this morning uh, because worship this morning is a actions and the attitudes uh, this morning that revere and honor our God this morning, uh, our Heavenly Father, the God of heaven and earth. Uh, so it's attributing in worth, uh, value, it's attributing to him respect, uh, love, gratefulness, and thankfulness uh, unto the Lord. Uh, I, human beings have worshipped uh, the Lord from the very beginning uh, of time, uh, the beginning of history. Worship is foundational this morning to everything else in the Christian life. Every single thing uh, is relative to worship this morning in our lives. So sometimes I'm afraid uh, that we come to church uh, on Sunday morning just because it's Sunday, <laughs> and that's what you do. I grew up in a home. You you went to church on Sunday. You went to church on Sunday night. You went to church on Wednesday night. Any other time the doors of the church was open, you went. Dad didn't care if you rode in the top of the car, in the trunk of the car, in the back of the car, you was going to church if you lived in his house. <laughs> Uh, but sometimes we, we think that we just go to church uh, on Sunday because that's what Sunday's for. And never realizing that Sunday uh, is an opportunity for corporate worship uh, with you and I uh, to come and just join our faith together and enjoy fellowship uh, and, and worship in the Lord. And it's because many times people don't worship during the week. They don't worship during the week, so many times they come in on Sunday morning, they're not prepared to worship. They've just shown up for church. They've not had any time with the Lord during the week. They've been busy, thousand and one things going on. In fact, uh, our desire to worship ought to be as much of a desire as it is to eat. Have you ever thought about that? The desire to worship ought to be as much of a desire to eat. Now, you know where I'm going this morning. <laughs> I'll tell you, some of you this morning, some of us, if we had that kind of desire to worship as much as we have a desire to eat, we would be some awesome worshipers. I'm telling you, we would be some awesome worshipers. Uh, can you imagine uh, uh, you go to the Golden Crowd or somewhere like that, and I'll tell you, there's some people over there can put away some food. Uh, you can watch them. They, they can devour some food. And, and uh, if you could worship like that, I'm telling you, it would bring, you know, it would bring heaven down. Uh, uh, but we're going to uh, worship this morning uh, uh, because we need to worship. It's just like food. If you don't eat, you're empty. Uh, and me, if I... I'm one of those that I've got to eat regular. Do I kind of get a little ill? I, I like to eat. I enjoy eating, and so uh, you lose your energy and and all of that. And and if you don't eat, uh, but as bad as that is, without worship this morning, uh, without worship, our spiritual strength, uh, our energy, our desire uh, to serve the Lord, uh, it, it's a disaster. 
Uh, COVID, if it showed us one thing this morning, uh, COVID, uh, when they shut everything down, couldn't go to church, people got used to not being in the house of God. They got where it was easier to stay home, uh, look at the internet, uh, uh, do a thousand and one thing instead of getting up, being in the house of the Lord. Once you back off on worship, I can tell you this morning, it's easy to let that go. Uh, and so it becomes a disaster. The reason that's true this morning is because you and I were created for worship. We were created for the worship of the Lord. God created us for himself. Uh, without it, you're absolutely miserable. There's people this morning, they're saved, but they're miserable. Saved but miserable because they've left out that element of worship uh, in relationship with God. If there was one thing all churches need this morning, don't care what the name is on the door, don't care what brand of, of faith they have this morning, uh, uh, if there's one thing that every church needs, they need pure worship. They more, need more of a focused worship. They need more of a biblical worship this morning. We need that. I don't care who it is. John, the fourth chapter. If you've been in church in the late time, you, you know the story of the little woman at the well. Jesus had traveled through Samaria and, and for one reason, and that was the woman that was at the well. She'd had five husbands. Uh, the one that she was with then was not her husband. So here's a woman that's just going through an incredible uh, uh, drama in her life, one relationship, one broken relationship after another. But this story, I, I'm not going to get into it, but I just want to tell you this, there is a ton of truth uh, about worship. Uh, it's a real life setting uh, with just ordinary people. Uh, it's about human uh, and as plain as it gets. Uh, it's about as human as it gets. Uh, it wasn't a temple service. Uh, it was a well outside of nowhere. Uh, yet there was real needs. There was a real uh, uh, problems. There was real life issues going on. And in the middle of all this drama that's taking place, uh, Jesus begins to teach about worship. Now, you would have thought that maybe, well, this is, this is not the place and the time. Uh, too many issues going here, too many problems. Uh, uh, in fact, he gets to talking to this woman and, and begins to uh, reveal where she's living and what's going on in her life. And, and she then begins automatically want to talk religion. <laughs> you know, sometimes we're like that. We, we, we don't like the position somebody's taken, so we begin to argue a little religious theology with them. Uh, Kind of take the pressure off where we're at. But it's in the middle of this drama. Jesus teaches about worship. Because if you ever get the thing called worship right, then the things that you're trying to fix in your life will not be so hard to fix. In a moment's time, as Jesus began to bring her to the realization of what real worship was, Things began to change in life, and they needed to change. The Samaritans uh, had built a, t built a temple on Mount Gerizim. Uh, they had set up their own worship as a to, rival to Jerusalem. Uh, and when the woman wanted to argue about the place of worship, here's what Jesus said. He said, the day's coming when you're not going to worship in this place or that, but you're going to worship in spirit and in truth. Jesus addressed it, said, in other words, it's not this place. <laughs> it's not about this place. It's not about that place. Uh, it's a state of mind. It's a state of, of your heart. Uh, worship begins who you are. It's not only just a state of mind it, and, and a state of heart, but it, it, in essence, it's exactly who you are. If you've not learned a lesson to worship uh, as a way of life this morning, I can tell you coming into church or on a Sunday morning won't change much. Here's the reason. Let me explain to you. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says, Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It ought to be at church all the time. Oh, Pastor, I don't know about that. Well, I, I'll give you an example. My friend Steve over here. We have worshiped in my field. 
We have worshipped in my yard. We have worshipped in my shop. We have worshipped in his truck. We have worshipped at the firehouse. Uh, anywhere we've been, we've had times of worship and prayer. Uh, I can't remember one time that he's been there in any setting that we haven't had prayer and we haven't had church. Sometimes he's balling, sometimes I'm balling, sometimes both of us balling. I, I mean, we're two or three are gathered together. The Bible says he's in the midst. And before Dorothy came along, he cried on my shoulder a lot. Dorothy took him to Jesus. <laughs> I'm telling you, uh, it, it, but it's just the presence of the Lord when you you are with another person uh, and, and and the Holy Spirit is working in them. Uh, there's there's just a fellowship, uh, a commonality uh, uh, between the two. You, if the Spirit of the Lord is living in you, then you can have church anywhere, anytime, over any situation. He gives you eyes to see <laughs> beyond life issues. He gives you a song instead of fear. He gives you a heart uh, to praise. Uh, here's what Psalms 113.3 says. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. In other words, this morning, praise and worship ought to be the regular routine of life. You hear me this morning? It ought to be something that is a daily routine of life. Not something you've got to be in a certain place to do. Not somewhere, uh, because if he's in you, if he's part of your life, he's going to draw you to himself. Here's what Psalms 34, 1 says. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be continually in my mouth. I'm going to tell you, if his praise is in our mouth, some of the other things that come out sometimes wouldn't be there. Just a thought. Anybody ever had words that you said or things that you said that as soon as they come out your mouth, you're trying to pull them back in? <laughs> but if praise is there, if praise and worship is there, you don't have to worry about what's coming out. Sometimes you have to practice Hebrews, the 13th chapter, verse 15. It says, let us continue offer up a sacrifice of praise unto the Lord. There's going to be some days. There's going to be some days. It's going to be hard to worship. You don't feel like worship. You, you, you just, you, you've lost your song. You, you, there's something that happened that, and somebody's going to cross you and they're, they've got on your last nerve and, and I mean they're laying on it and that, that nerve is shaking and carrying on and, and you know what, you know the moments I'm talking about. Those moments when things are not going right, and, and you just got to offer up a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. I've got to force myself. I, I just got to do it. I've got to say, Lord, I, I don't understand that, but you're in charge. You are all powerful. You have all authority. I, I, I yield to you. I, I don't know where I'm at. I don't know what I'm doing. But God, you are the boss this morning. He says the reason worship is not a place or an event, it's an orientation of life. Hear me now. It's not a place or an event, it's an orientation of life. It, it, it's an orientation, it's what your life is about, is an orientation of the presence of God walking with Him. You know, sometimes people can come into church uh, and they, they've got a sanctimonious spirit about them, everything is just, they, they look like they're so holy that you, you just, uh, you, 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 you got to be careful around them, and yet get in the parking lot, and then another, another picture takes place. How can that happen? How can it happen one moment? We're all sanctimonious, religious, next moment, the, the devil's in charge. It's because we've not learned how to worship. We've not got this thing called worship down where, where we need to have it. They think that they can walk into church and just something magical happens and there's magic in the songs, there's magic in the pulpit, there's magic in the pews. And they just, uh, uh, I want to tell you, no, 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 a thousand times no. What it is this morning, the secret 
is in the believer who comes in that door who's full of the Holy Ghost. That's the difference. Coming in full of the Holy Ghost, uh, prepared to worship, looking for worship, looking to, for God to show up, looking for God to rain down his presence. Uh, the fuel of worship this morning is the truth of God. The furnace this morning uh, of worship is your spirit this morning. Uh, the fire of worship this morning is the Holy Spirit. You put those three together. It'll turn up some heat. <laughs> I, I, it, it'll put a spiritual touch on you. You see, it's God's call to worship this morning. Worship is always at God's invitation. Don't miss this. It's not the pastor calling you to worship this morning. It's not the choir calling you this morning to worship. It's God calling each one of us to worship this morning. Uh, so when we don't worship, I want you to think about this. When we decide not to worship, we don't want to get involved. We don't want to get too excited. We don't get this. We're turning God down. Have you ever thought about that? That we're turning down the opportunity to meet with God, to have a relationship with God, get close to God. We're turning down his invitation to let him bless us. You've heard me say many times, God has a thousand ways to bless you you had not even thought about. He don't have to call no board meeting in heaven to decide whether he wants to bless you or not. He don't have to say, come on, angels, let's get away from and have a little board meeting and see if we can bless uh, uh, so-and-so down there. No, he don't have to. He can bless you anytime he wants to. <laughs> but how many times we want to bless him? Uh, how many times we want to acknowledge him? Uh, you see, the truth is this morning, uh, so when we don't worship him, we're turning down the God of all glory. It's telling God, I, I, I just, you're not that important today. And it has nothing to do with the church service. It has something to do with everything, everyday life, uh, everyday experiences of worship that God desires from us. Taking time for him. We need to take time for him. I, let me, there's not one in here this morning that your boss was there. I would say, look, why don't you let's hang out a little while today? I, I just want to just spend some time with you. I, I, I just think it would be great if we could just hang out. There would be not one person say to the boss, well, I, I've got other things that I, I can't do with that. I don't want to hang out. You would hang out with them because of who it is. How much more this morning uh, you and I ought to hang out with the king of glory whenever there's an opportunity presented to get the, a little closer to him. I think we ought to do it. Psalms 95 is a call to worship. Uh, it's a psalm that begins with an invitation, a call to worship the Lord. Now look, it says, come, uh, well, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Jamie, some weeks ago on a Wednesday night, sang a song, I, I Go to the Rock. I'll tell you, she could have sung it two, three times. I, I was ready to rock a little bit that night. I mean, the, the Lord was here. The, the, the song was anointed. And it, because here's what I said, where do I go when there's nobody to turn to? Uh, who do I talk to when there's nobody who wants to listen? Who do I lean on where there's no foundation stable? I go to the rock. I know he's able. I go to the rock. Uh, it says, when the earth all around me is sinking sand, on oh, Jesus Christ, the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. I mean, all the theology, everything, and, I, and, and it was good. And I, I was ready to roll with it. Uh, because music uh, is God's truth put in song. It's singing that you are able to express uh, your love and relationship to God in music like no other way. It's a wonderful thing. But the psalmist takes it to another level. He says, shout, get excited. It's not just a song. It's a mood. It's an atmosphere. It's something we believe. It's something we feel. It's in your spirit is when you begin to sing, just something happens. It's something that penetrates and saturates your very emotions. But notice who we're singing to here. We're singing to the Lord. We're singing to the rock of our salvation. We're not just singing to the song leader. We're not singing as a backup to the choir. It's the Lord here in your voice this morning. Sing unto him. 
this singing of his love and his mercy and his grace and faithfulness, his love and kindness. Uh, if you're singing unto the Lord, it doesn't matter what it sounds like this morning. Well, Pastor, I just can't sing. There's no word in the Bible does it sing you say you've got to sing good. It does back that says, make a habit racket unto the Lord. Well, not quite like that. It says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I just interpret that as a happy racket. You know, I never sung in church, not one time, and my wife can tell you, never sung in church till I was 30 years old. I was 30 years old. Never sung, because I grew up with a guy that was in church. Now, he was a, Shorty Butler was a wonderful big fiddle player. Big, you know those big old fiddles that you, you pump like this? And, and, uh, and he was as big as the fiddle was. And, and, and he, they'd go around there once in a while. They'd get, all, and they'd get all excited. But he couldn't sing. He could play the fiddle, but he couldn't sing. And I thought, man, I don't want to sound like that. So I never, I never did sing in church. So I was 30 years old. We was leaving California, uh, going home, uh, uh, leave, Arizona, going home on leave. Uh, to Virginia, went by Texarkana. Our pastor then was doing a revival in Texarkana, and we stopped by the, to be in that revival for a night or two, and the song leader in there, I don't remember a thing about whether he could sing good or not. I just knew he could lead the song service. He got, he got on power in the blood of about 30 minutes, uh, the same song. He was all over the platform. He was up and down. He was everywhere. He was turning inside out. I mean, you talking about the anointing and excitement over him. I said, Lord, if I could sing like that, if I could get that happy, I would certainly do it. <laughs> that's what started my singing. Well, you still don't sing good, but that's not, a, that's not the point. <laughs> I can make a joyful noise unto the Lord, a happy racket unto the Lord. Well, Pastor, I just don't believe you ought to get that excited in church. Really? You've got to be kidding me. Internet, what planet are you on this morning? You're getting ready to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the most incredible God anyone could ever imagine. How is it that you can't worship him? You can't get excited over him. You can get excited over a quarterback and a pair of leotards. <laughs> well, he grew up playing football. Still a pair of leotards. <laughs> and you get over excited over that, but you cannot get excited over the Lord of glory? Really? I'm just, Think about it for a minute. My son-in-law, he was, he was absolutely into the Browns. The Browns never won anything, hardly, but he was a diehard Brown fan. He was from Ohio. <laughs> and they know, that in, fact, in fact, one of the biggest fans uh, was a pretty important guy and uh, had a lot of money and everything, and so he wanted all the, all the Brown football players at his funeral uh, to be the, the ones that curious caster. He said, I want him to just let me down one more time. <laughs> but he, my, my son, he would put the Browns helmet on, the jersey on. He would be all into it. I mean, fired up. Whether they lost or anything, they were just the Browns. Uh, and he was going to he was going to be right in there with them. How is it that you can be that excited over a losing football team, but you cannot get excited over the King of Glory who's winning with you every day? Who? Have you ever thought maybe that they know more about the quarterback's stats than they know about God? Who? They can tell you everything from his underwear size to how far he can throw the football. They know all the stats. Let me tell you some stats this morning about our God. He's the King of Kings. <laughs> He's the Lord of Lords. He's the great I Am. He's the one that knew the moment, the very moment of your conception. Knows you uh, not only by your name this morning, but the number of hairs on your head. Uh, knows every cell in your body. 
knows everything. I knows everything about you. Knows your past. He knows your present. He also knows your future. And we can't get excited over that. The Bible said, you look at it in Psalms, his hands. And his hands are the depths of the earth. The mountain peaks are his. The seas are his. He made them. His hands formed the dry ground. That's greatness, church. That is greatness. As somebody this morning who we ought to worship on a daily basis uh, because have you ever known anybody else like God? The Bible says he's the father, the treasure of the snow. That not one snowflake is the same as the other one. Now, you would think after the four feet of snow that fell in California, there'd be some flakes the same, but the Bible says no. He is the treasure of the snow. He's the father of the snow. He's a mountain maker. How many mountain makers do you know? He's the earth maker. How many uh, earth makers know? He's the maker of the solar system. How many of you know solar system makers? He walks on the water. How many of you know can walk on the water? I'm going to tell you we have a God like no other this morning. One who's perfect in all his ways, verse 7, and we are the sheep of his pasture. The people of his pasture, the sheep of his hand. And we don't have time to worship him. We're the people of his pasture. The sheep of his head who feeds us every day and we don't have time to worship him. So let's put this in perspective. Let's look at it for just a little bit this morning. We're the sheep of his pasture. So we're just grazing through life every day. Grazing on the blessings of God, all the good things, and just eating up and soaking up, chomp, 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 all the blessings of God, chomp, 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 all the goodness of God, chomp, 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 all the wonderful things God gives us every day, just grazers. We become sort of like a dog. How many dogs, when you come, you put the food down? Thank the Lord for all the food. The dog don't pray. He just goes to the food, chomp, 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 chomp. Got any more? Chomp, 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 chomp. And sometimes we're just like that. We'll soak up God's blessing after blessing, after blessing, after blessing, uh, and we forget to praise Him, to thank Him. Did you thank Him this morning for the one sitting beside you? Did you wake up this morning thanking Him for the one that you woke up with, the one that tonight when you go to bed, you go to bed with and thanking Him for, for that one that's in your life? I'm, I'm, I'm talking about acknowledging this one the God uh, who gives us all things. Uh, not just being a grazer this morning. Uh, last week I preached a message on you got to keep moving. You got to keep moving. In every service, God gives you an invitation to move. In Exodus, the 15th chapter, Exodus 15, when God delivered Israel out from under the hand of Pharaoh, Miriam and the women uh, took the tambourines and they began to dance and to sing. Uh, you can imagine it was an incredible moment as they have got on the other side of that Red Sea. God closed it over and destroyed all the Egyptian army. Uh, in that moment, they knew they were free. Uh, they knew that in that moment, uh, God was moving in their behalf, uh, that God had met every need. Uh, uh, and, man, they just took the tambourines, began to beat the tambourines, uh, shouting, singing to the Lord, where are the tambourines today? Where's tambourines in churches today? Oh, oh, do they still make them? Yes. There's no shortage of tambourines. There's no shortage of tambourines. There's still plenty of tambourines. What it is is a shortage of worshipers. They get all excited about what God's done, what he's doing, and, and his working in their life is a shortage this morning of a worship. The second chapter or the second Samuel sixth chapter, David, when he brought the ark of the covenant back home to the Israelites. He was so overwhelmed 
with joy and excitement and enthusiasm and what God had done. The King David began to dance with everything with him. I, I mean, I, he let it all go. I mean, there was no uh, holding back. I mean, he was just lost in worship and dance. Uh, his wife, Michael, looked at him and was disgusted. She said, David, you're making a fool of yourself. David said, no, 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 no. How can I not uh, express to the Lord my thankfulness, uh, my gratefulness for all he has done for Israel, all he's done for us? I, I'm in a position where I'm at because of God's goodness, his love and mercy. And my hands can't stay still. My feet can't still. I've got to praise the Lord. I've got to tell him my, how good he's been to me, how much I love him this morning. He's been too good to me not to worship him. Now listen carefully what I'm going to say this morning because this gets right down to where it's at. Michael, who condemned David for his worship, the Bible says God closed her womb. It meant that she would be barren for the rest of her life. In that day and time, that was the worst thing that could happen to a woman was be barren, not to be able to produce children was one of the most horrible stigmas on a woman in that day that could be. And because she was disgusted with David over dancing before the Lord, uh, she was a disgust among the women of that generation in that day. Let me tell you something. We dare not mess with God's worship. We'd have never quenched the moving and the working of the Holy Spirit. We'd never uh, this morning to, to interrupt the praise and the worship of God for anything. Uh, I don't care what it, when we begin to praise the Lord, when the Spirit of God begins to move, we don't dare quench or stop the, the moving and the working of the Holy Spirit uh, uh, in a service because the Holy Spirit can do more in just a few seconds than I can do in an hour of preaching. When we come into corporate worship, we're not coming just to do our own little religious thing. We're coming to worship one like no one else. We're coming to, to the one who cares and loves us more than anybody else has ever cared and loved us. We're coming to him, uh, not because of our needs, not because of our circumstances or situations or problems. In life. We're coming in spite of them. We're coming in spite of what's falling around us, uh, uh, coming apart around us, and we're coming to thank him, praise him for who he is and the fact that we still have breath in our bodies to honor him. Sometimes it's not just coming in the service to figure out what God can do for you. Sometimes it's coming in the service what we can do for the Lord, and that's to praise him. You can't make him any richer. You can't make him any greater. You cannot make him any more powerful, but you can worship him. You can praise him. Don't let anything or anybody rob you of your excitement in worship, my friend. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy of all of our highest praise. He's worthy this morning of the fullest expression of our relationship with him. And some of you, maybe it's a new thing for you. For some of you, you've been around the block a while. Some of you, like me, that's, that's grown up in the church. God has been good to us all these years. Uh, I'll tell you, it ought to be a humbling. It ought to be a, a recognition of all God is and who he is and how good he's been to us uh, and allow him uh, uh, to receive the glory of, of worship and praise and adoration from a heart uh, that's been changed by him. I wanted my son to come in just a moment. He's coming to, to, to lead us in a course. That, that little song we sang a while ago, I go to the rock. I, I, it, it, it's a powerful message this morning. Uh, there's going to be times you, there's nowhere else you can go. There's nobody else you can turn to. There's nobody else going to hear your mess. There's, there's just somebody, nobody else going to be able that you're going to talk to because they don't understand. They want to, as, as Michael didn't understand, David's worship, there's going to be people who don't understand your worship. But don't let that stop you. 
You go to the law. You go to the one this morning who saved you, redeemed you, bought you at a price. One this morning who's got his name on you. A Christian, a believer. And to say this one, well, I just don't have time. I, 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 what somebody else is going to think, it ought not to matter. Ought to have all the time in the world, and it ought not to matter what somebody else is going to think. Uh, I would not want to hold back my praise and my worship. Uh, I would not want to hold back uh, my recognition of God because of what somebody else is thinking and cause me to lose out with God. I'm not going to do that. Don't ever let that happen. Let God bring you in the fullness of that experience with him. Uh, I don't care what service it is tonight when you come in. Why don't you just come in prepared to just lift your hands and worship. Uh, come in and just uh, get excited uh, uh, with the Lord tonight. Just get excited uh, this morning before you leave. We, uh, these altars are going to be open in just a moment. You, you've got all the freedom and liberty to come down and just take a moment and worship the Lord. And just tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you. I, I, I could be in a hospital this morning. Uh, I could be down with some disease. I, 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 I could be going through a, a, some type of a, uh, incurable problem this morning. I could be facing something next week or, or the next month. I, I don't even know what I'm going to be dealing with because you already got it in your hands. You've got it covered. Now, it wasn't mentioned this morning at prayer time, but I'm going to mention that because I want you to pray. I believe God's going to take care of it. Started this morning, he's got a bone cancer in his arm and in his shoulder, his right shoulder and arm. He's been praying for those up here for years now. The Bible says it this way, pray ye one to another that ye may be healed. I'm depending on God to touch him and heal him. I want you to pray, but you won't find him sulking and pity partying and all that. You're going to find him worshiping the Lord, uh, continuing to serve the Lord, give God the glory in the midst. That's what we do. We give God the glory in the midst of, of what's happening and all that because it, he's worthy of it. We honor him this morning that when I don't feel like praising, when I don't feel like singing, and when I, 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 I no, there's no excuse this morning. We worship the Lord. Come on, stand with me this morning. Father, thank you today. Thank you this morning for the privilege of worship. 